Hi there, welcome back to your queer history lesson. I'm the Moontor, Shane Daniel Byrne. Today's lesson on your queer history is all about the laws. Oftentimes, queers fight the law, and lately, we've been winning. Here are some of the main milestones in LGBTQ plus rights throughout the years. A number of Irish gay civil rights movements are established, including the Irish gay rights movement chaired by David Norris. In 1975, David Norris appeared on Last House in what is believed to be the first interview with an openly gay person on RTE television. His first sentence was to state that homosexuals were not sick people, but were subject to head colds and influenza as others are. On the 19th of March 1983, LGBTQ plus people marched in protest from Liberty Hall to Fairview. It was a response to the ruling of the tragic death of Declan Flynn, who was beaten to death for being gay, which highlighted and accelerated the Pride movement in Ireland. Later that year in June was a week-long schedule of celebrations and protests. Although the first Gay Pride Week events had been held years before in 1979, the first Pride Parade was held this year and it has gone from strength to strength ever since. A 14-year legal battle by Senator David Norris against the Irish state came to an end in October 1988, when the European Court of Human Rights rules that Irish laws penalising male homosexual behaviour had breached the European Convention on Human Rights. This verdict paved the way for future changes to decriminalise in Ireland. After a lengthy campaign, on the 24th of June 1993 came the decriminalisation of homosexuality in Ireland. Minister for Justice Maura Gagan Quinn said the move would allow gay people to express themselves in personal relationships without the fear of being branded as criminals. It was a watershed moment for the LGBTQ community in Ireland. In April 1997, Dr Lydia Foy begins legal proceedings in the High Court after being rejected a birth certificate and legal recognition of her female gender in 1993 and after several years of fruitless correspondence. At this time, Ireland had no provision for legal recognition of transgender people in their true gender. A civil partnership bill passes through Cabinet that grants same-sex couples some of the same rights as married couples. And although the bill was cautiously welcomed, it still left a lot of inequality, particularly when it came to children and adoption. Following a historical referendum which amended the Constitution of Ireland, Ireland became the first country in the world to bring in same-sex marriage by popular vote. The result was described as a social revolution and an expression of decency. Now, funnily enough, in the efforts to legalise same-sex marriage, the government came close to potentially making heterosexual marriage unconstitutional due to the translation of the Irish language version of the law. When translated back to English, it originally read that a couple may, whether they are men or women, make a contract of marriage in accordance with law. There were concerns that this could be interpreted as meaning that only men and only women could marry one another and the wording was changed before the referendum took place. Following landmark legal proceedings taken by Dr Lydia Foy and recommendation from the Gender Recognition Advisory Group which was set up in 2010, the Gender Recognition Act was passed on the 15th of July 2015. This act enabled trans people to achieve full legal recognition of their preferred gender. The first gender recognition certificate was issued to Lydia Foy and she finally obtained the birth certificate showing her female gender that she had first requested 22 years beforehand. After the final sections of the Children and Family and Relationships Act 2015 were enacted in 2020, Neve O'Sullivan and Geraldine Ray became the first same-sex couple in Ireland to have both their names registered on the official birth cert of their twin baby girls. So we've seen where we've come from, but where have we left to go? Many children of LGBTQ plus parents in Ireland are still denied the right to have a legally recognised relationship with both of their parents, including children born to male parents and children born via surrogacy. And there are calls on the government to amend the Children and Family Relationships Act. Groups like Tenny are still advocating for the inclusion of young intersex and non-binary people in the Gender Recognition Act, as well as better access to healthcare for all trans people. 
And while in March 2018, a bill was introduced to ban so-called conversion therapy on LGBTQ plus people, it is still sitting in the early committee stages in the Senate. So the practice is currently still legal. In the space of a generation, Ireland has come a long way in going from a country that was overwhelmingly conservative toward LGBTQ plus issues to becoming far more liberal in laws and attitudes, thanks to heroes of the community who have fought long and hard for all of this. RTE, proud to stand, proud to party. See RTE.ie forward slash pride.